Hello guys, welcome back to the Rating Climb. Here's the wheel. We're gonna try to get to 700, and I'm gonna start off with a spin. As you can see, Bon Cloud is still on there, pretty large, Hippo as well, Danish Gambit, and let's see what we get. Of course, any super chats with the request to increase uh, an opening or to add a new opening. Oh, uh, there we go, Hippo, all right. So we're gonna do the Hippo again. We're gonna be pre-moving the first four moves. Let's jump into a game. All right, uh, what am I doing, Hippo? One, two, three, four. What's up, Kyle? How you doing? Okay. Let's go ahead and finish out the hippo while we're at it. Very, very solid setup. Bringing the knights to the center. Our opponent is, is doing pretty well as, as also with a nice uh, center. All right, what I like to do is just push by usually. And now it sort of looks like a king's Indian almost. But we can continue. Bringing the knight here. Bishops are going to go here. And you can see how at the lower levels, the hippo could be very could be very annoying to play against. Let's go bishop g7. Bishop b7. And probably, I don't want to castle because I'll lose the pawn. So maybe we just strike with f5. Seems like a good plan. Okay. F5 takes takes. We're still okay. This is also going to be defended, so everything looks good. Let's play F5. Is this a legit opening? Yes. The hippo is a legit opening. Yes. It's not bad, actually. Yeah, even strong players can play it, and it's it's kind of difficult to, to know what to do against it. So yes, absolutely, you can play the hippo if you would like. The nice thing about the hippo, you know, if you go back to like the main position here, is you don't really have any weaknesses. Your, your pawns are kind of controlling everything. Okay, well, they just played a move. But like your, your pawns are really just controlling all these squares, right? So you just, it's hard for, you know, white to do anything. Now, of course, strong players will know what to do, but a lot of lower rated players have a hard time. Okay, we can trap the bishop. What happens after the sacrifice? I think we're surviving. So let's go ahead. Trapping the bishop. Notice... It has nowhere to go. And I guess white's probably going to sack here. So we'll pre-move that one. Hey, Dustin. I am back on. Nice to see you again. We played Dustin earlier today. Okay, so he gets two pawns. And I have to be careful, right? Because my king's in the center. But what I noticed earlier was that I have this nice little square here on e5. So let's jump the knight in there. And notice how it shuts down the rook. Also puts pressure on the bishop. and gives me a space for my queen so that I can probably castle this way and get out of the danger. He wants to play f4, chase my knight away, which is smart. But I think I'm still going to go queen to d7. And if he plays f4, I'm just going to trade. And then I'm going to castle. And I'm going to be just fine. So that's the plan. Notice it's defended twice, so we're okay here. So we're going to trade and castle next turn. Okay, he didn't uh, force me to do that. I don't have to take that. I could still take it, or I could just castle right away. Let's go ahead and take it. We'll just get rid of that bishop, and then we will castle, I think. Oh, interesting move. Uh, okay. Yeah, it doesn't quite work. There, there's going to be a fork, but since he loses the knight, it's it's not really a good trade. But I, I see the I see the logic there. I do see the logic. But we have two extra bishops at the end of everything here. So this is going to be pretty nice for us. Okay, let's go ahead and grab the pawn. Tax the rook. It's defended by the bishop. And let's activate our rook. Threatening the back rank. Threatening the knight. All right, good move there. Let's put some pressure on the rook. We've got some pressure here as well. I'm going to go here. It looks like I'm losing a piece. But actually, I have a follow-up move. There we go, and I'm going to get the rook for it. And normally giving up two pieces for a rook is not really a great trade. So 
But in this case, since I was already ahead, it helps me to simplify the position. So it makes sense. I should make a video on the hippo. Yeah, that's a good idea, actually. Video on the hippo. Hippo is one of those openings that I don't really like to see when I'm playing because it's it's hard to play against it. Okay, he's trying to get fancy, but it doesn't work because the rook is pinned. So you can't really do anything there. I'll take with the rook, give myself the discovered check, grab the pawn, grab another pawn with check. Let's go check here, and I think we can almost get checkmate. Very quickly. All right. Good game to our opponent. Okay. Update the wins here. 24. And let's bring up the wheel. All right. As a reminder, let's not the wheel. Where's the wheel at? Hold on. Hold on. I lost it. There it is. There's the wheel. Okay. Sorry. There you go, guys. All right. So we, we played the hippo. Let me take it off of here. I'm going to just... We had two on the hippo. That's going to go down to one. And as a reminder, you guys can request things if you really want to via Super Chat. Okay, let's spin it. Hey Godwin, I'm doing good. How are you? Thanks for tuning in. Vampire Gambit. Ooh, I'm gonna have to look this one up. I don't I don't think I know this one. Okay, let's go. Let's go see if we can find what it is. Vampire Gambit. Chess opening. What do you have for me, Google? What do you have? Oh my, is this really what it is? Oh my, hold on, hold on. Vampire chess opening. Okay, this is what it looks like it is. Let me, let me go ahead and show you guys. This could lead to something interesting. All right. It looks like it's, I'm trying to figure out if it's for white or black. E4, E5, F4. Wait, is this even the, I don't even know if this is the vampire gambit, actually. Hold on, hold on. No, oh, that's, that's probably not it. It must be this one. It must be this one. Okay, hold on. C4, E5, F4. This is called the double whammy variation. <laughs> the double whammy variation. Wow. Who comes up with these names? Okay. Takes. Knight of three. G5. And G3. This, apparently, is the vampire gambit. Wow. So I have to play C4, F4, knight F3, and G3 as my first four moves. Vampire gambit. Okay. Let's do it. C4, F4. Knight of three and then g3. All right, I got it. Okay, here we go against the 400. c4, f4, knight of three, g3. Is he going to take some stuff here? Yes. All right, why, now why would we do that? Why, why would we do that? I mean... Do I take it? I'm still going to have some weaknesses there. Do I just leave it? Eesh, what a terrible opening. All right, let's play d4. I'm trying to give my king an escape route in case I need it because I've destroyed everything over here. Let's develop some pieces now. Probably going to get the bishop to f4 because I think it can maybe help along these dark squares is what I'm thinking. Bishop f4. And we'll take this one with the rook. Oh, they're not going to do it. Okay. Now I will probably just take... Actually, we'll, we'll take that first. And I'll just take with the bishop. All right, so we've kind of fixed some of those dark squared weaknesses, so I'm feeling a little bit better about my position. They're going for the pin there. Let's play queen b3 to line up here. Also add some support. Not that I really needed it. Fried liver. EXP bar wants to see the fried liver. Okay, I will add it right after this game. Let's take here with the queen. We're pinning the knight. We could follow up 95 if black doesn't do something. Although they have, yeah, I was going to say, bishop d7 looks like a good move. Okie dokie. I don't really like leaving my queen in danger like that, right? Because the knight could move somewhere and then I, my queen's in trouble. So I'm going to just get out of there. 
I'm going to get away from that right away. Probably going to play bishop g2 in castle. Knight e4. Okay, he wants to trade here. That's okay. Let's go here. You can take that if we need to. There we go. We do have a threat here on h7. Seize that. Very nice. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and castle. I do want to get my king out of the center. f5. Let's jump in with the knight. We're also attacking here. Now we have a double attack here. Okay. Here we go. There's an attack. Very weird looking position, to be honest with you guys. It's, it's a very strange position. I'm okay with the queen trade because it fixes my pawns. Notice I have double isolated, isolated pawn. When we take here, they're now all nice and pretty looking. Okay, let's see if we can get this protected. To be a protected pass pawn. There we go. So now this is a super dangerous setup. If we are able to trade these pieces, this pawn is a is a constant threat, right? That's why pass pawns are so dangerous. It's a constant threat. Okay. I'm going to go here. Yes, I'm losing a pawn, but I'm activating my rook. And I think that's more valuable. So here we go. We're coming in with the rook. And it, it, again, it has to do with the pass pawn. I'm trying to make opportunities for this pawn to push forward. I think I'm, I think I'm going to actually sacrifice here. And why am I doing this? Because I have the follow-up, and then I have two pawns that are connected, which is going to be too difficult for black to stop. Ooh, I also just noticed I have this. I didn't see that initially, but now I'm seeing I have a fork as well. Okay, and here we go. You can't stop the pawns. You just can't stop it. And it's got the rook supporting it. Good game. Jerome Gambit, bigger slice of the wheel. Dragon, Dragon or 2009. You got it, buddy. I will bump up the Jerome Gambit. All right. So we're going to get the queen. And it's relatively straightforward now. Let's bring the rook in. The rook and the queen together are very powerful. So we are going to start looking for checkmate here. Let's see what can we do. We can go check here. There we go. And all right. Good game to our opponent. Okay. So we have to add a few things to the wheel here. So first of all, EXP bar wants fried liver. All right, let's go. I think fried liver is already on. Is it already on this little wheel? Oh, it's not. Looks like it's not on there. Okay, so we're adding fried liver. Fried liver makes the list. And then Jerome Gambit, bigger slice. Yes, so where's Jerome Gambit? Here we go. Let's jump it up to two. Okay. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. All right. Here we go. It's time to spin the wheel. Ooh, so close to the bomb cloud. The Evans Gambit. All right, Evans Gambit. So in case anybody is unfamiliar, let's jump over to the analysis board. Let me turn this off. Okay, Evans Gambit is E4, Knight F3. It comes out of the Italian game. And it's when they play bishop c5, you give away this pawn, okay? And the reason, sorry, the reason we're doing this is because we want to be able to play c3, gain a tempo on the piece, wherever it goes, it doesn't really matter. We're going to, at some point, play d4 and try to get a nice big center. Okay, that's the idea. All right, so my first four moves, e4, knight f3, bishop c4, and b4. Okay, let's go ahead. Yeah, the toilet variation, we'll have to see if we get that. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure, but apparently it's an actual opening. Okay, so here, knight f3, bishop c5, b5. Evans gambit, pre-move. Uh-oh, our opponent is not connected. All right, let's try that again. Knight of three, bishop c4, b4. Uh-oh. 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 <laughs> okay. Okay. Well played by our opponent. So uh, let's save our rook now. 
There's actually another good move here. Queen Queen D4 is a fork. Look at that. Oh my. All right. Well, it's a rough start, but maybe we can take advantage of this. Let's see. Check. And we pick up the bishop. I don't know if that's good enough. Let's actually start this way. So we're threatening three different things. And let's see how our opponent is going to try to deal with that. Three different threats here. Evans can't win his OP, yeah. <laughs> All right, so they deal with this one, but they're giving me this and this. Now, I don't actually win a rook. They just save it, right? This is a free piece. So I think I'm going to take this one. Still queen d4 with the fork, but now I would have queen c3. Okay, they play this move. Now, whenever I see a move like this, I usually want to stop the pawn. Because if this pawn comes forward, the bishop comes out. If I just put a piece right there, this pawn is stuck and it just jams everything up. So I'm thinking of queen here. Or bishop there. Yeah, let's go with the queen. Okay, and the, the main reason is, is the pawn. It's so annoying for a black. You can't do anything, right? You can't move your pawn. You can't move your bishop. If you can't move your bishop, you can't castle. And if you can't castle, the rook has to stay in the corner. So that one square kind of blocks up all these pieces. Okay, let's go ahead and develop a piece here. Get the knight out. That's a, that's a free piece, so we're going to grab that guy. And I'm looking at checkmate ideas like this. Okay. Again, same idea. I don't want that pawn to move, so I will just go here. Let's go ahead and make the king leave. And we'll see if we can hunt down the king here. It's going to escape, but now we can use our other pieces here. Go check with the pawn. Go check with the knight, and I'm just trying to lure the king closer to my side of the board. Yes, exactly. If they want to take that, they can. All right, all right. And now it's just a question of how do we finish it off? Let's go here. And I think what we're going to do is try to jump the bishop around, or maybe even just play d4 and like this, just getting that other bishop involved. Okay. Go check. Yeah, good good job by our opponent trying to hold on, but I don't think they're going to be able to do it because we're about to get the rook involved here, and there's just too many pieces. There's just too many pieces hunting the king. So I don't think black's going to be able to survive this. They are, they are doing their best. I'll give it to them. Wasn't that checkmate in one? Did I miss a checkmate in one? I didn't see it if it was there. I did not see it. Okay. Now I see it. Now I see it. It's not in one, but... Actually, never mind. There it is, there it is. Okay. Whew. That was harder than I, than I thought it was going to be. Did I miss a mate in one? I don't think so. Let's see. Mate in ten. No, I don't think there was really anything. Black did a pretty good job of defending that, actually. Okay, we just played... What did we just play? The Evans Gambit. All right, so I'm going to remove the Evans Gambit. And we're going to spin the wheel again. So here's the wheel. And uh, let's see. What do we have? Von Cloud, Bird is on there. Danish Gambit. Jerome Gambit is a bigger slice now. Okay. Update the win count. Thank you. What's the win count? Is it 26? Something like that. I missed mate in one two times in that game. I missed mate in one two times. Really? Would love to see that. Where did I miss mate in one two times? No, I didn't miss mate in one two times. I don't think I missed mate in one at all. Oh, the wheel's blocking. Sorry, 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 guys. 
I don't think there was a main one. I don't know when did you think it was a main one. Yeah, if you thought it was the queen there, that's not main. That's not main one because the king escapes. If you're thinking this is checkmate, that's not. And I don't know what else, but yeah, there was no checkmate. It wasn't there. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna spin the wheel again. All right, are we ready? Here we go. Jerome Gambit. There it is. Who requested that? Who was it? Dragonor 2009. You got it. Jerome Gambit. Okay. I actually have to look this up because it's been a while. So give me a moment, guys. Give me just a moment here to make sure I don't uh, misplay this. Jerome Gambit. I think I know what it is, but I need to just verify. So the Jerome Gambit is e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 bishop c4 bishop c5 bishop takes f7 check that's the jerome gambit okay so it's the italian game where you just sag the bishop right away that's what i thought but i just wanted to make sure all right let's go ahead here we go okay so i have to go here and here and here and here Okay. Okay, okay. I'm not sure that's quite worth it, but we'll we'll see if we can make it work. Let's gain a tempo on the knight. Let's go ahead and develop. Try to get as many pieces out as as quickly as we can. Ah, and I think I'm going to again gain a tempo. The question is how do I want to gain the tempo with the knight jumping in or the bishop coming out? Let's go with the bishop coming out. Cuz that way we get another piece into the game. Queen's got to move. I might play d5, actually. The reason I'm thinking about d5 is because I want to bring the queen up. Could also just castle. It also looks pretty solid. Could still bring the knight in here. Lots of good, good moves here. Let's play d5. It just seems like it makes a lot of sense. We'll take with the queen. I need to leave the knight here, by the way, to defend my bishop. That's why I'm not going to retake with the knight. Take with the queen. Okay, he plays knight here. Solid move, I guess. Let's go ahead and trade this. And I'm just trying to open up some of these things to get to the king better. He could take my knight. We'll recapture that. Ooh, didn't see that one. All right, we're going to block with the bishop. Why? Because I don't want to lose my castling rights. I still want to castle. Also, by moving the bishop back, I open up that square. Or you guessed it, the knight fork. And he don't see it. There we go. We got it. Are there cheaters in Blitz? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's not as common, but yes, at the top level, you can easily play a whole game in three minutes feeding the moves to the engine. Absolutely. Because it takes about three seconds. For people who are fast, they can do it in two or three seconds. So, I mean, you can make a lot, I don't know what the math is on that, but you can make a lot of moves. A lot of top engine moves, and most people aren't going to survive long enough to win on time. All right. And that should have just about do it. Probably going to castle anyway. No, I'll just trade this since they gave it to me. Okay, let's go ahead and set up a checkmate here. 
Now, White can stop it, but I'm I'm just seeing if they're gonna let me do it. If not, I will obviously have to play on. But we're gonna we're gonna go for the quick win. All right, we did get it. Okay, let's pull up the wheel. First thing I'm gonna do, I need to take one off of the Jobaba London. I'm sorry, not the Jobaba London. Why did I say that? Jerome Gambit. That's what we just played. Okay, and then. Add the Wayward Queen, EXP bar. All right, Wayward Queen. Do I already have Wayward Queen? No, I don't. Okay, Wayward Queen it is. Wayward Queen. There we go. Wayward Queen is on the wheel. Hey, Kyle. Welcome to Checkmaters. Okay, and thank you, EXP bar. We've added Wayward Queen. Let's go ahead and spin it. What do we have? Danish Gambit. Somebody had requested this earlier. Okay, Danish Gambit. So for those of you who do not know what that is, Danish Gambit is when you play E4, immediately D4, you sacrifice another pawn, and then you leave it, and you bring out your bishop, and then you take again. And this is kind of the idea, okay? So for me, first four moves are gonna be one, two, three, and four. So this is kind of risky. This could be kind of risky. So let's go ahead and see if we can make this happen. Okay, so here. There we go. Removed the first four moves. Looks like our opponent's not taking anything yet. That's a good sign for us. Uh-oh, there we go. Okay, so this is actually kind of just like the Danish Gambit. It's called the Elephant Gambit for black. We'll go ahead and take that. But we can see a similar type of position. We have both bishops aiming at the king side and very dangerous for white if they're not careful. Very dangerous for white. We'll see what they're going to do. C3. Okay, so the first thing that comes to mind is a move like takes check and I win the bishop but I don't know if that's quite good enough yeah it's probably pretty good let's go ahead we'll just do that so they lose the castling rights and then we get our piece back over here that's the idea Bishop e3, okay. It looks like we can grab this and get a rook. There is knight to d2, which would save the rook, but still, I'm going to do it. Because on knight to d2, I'll be able to grab this way. And white's losing an awful lot of pawns now. I really need to play knight to f6 to get a, a threat here. That's a pretty good move. Let's just retreat over here to a5, try to get away from the pieces attacking me, although knight c4 would probably be a good follow-up move. Okay, they didn't see that. Let's play knight f6, like I mentioned. This is a very powerful move, I think, knight to g4. And I'm going to go ahead and castle. Whenever I see a rook lined up on my king, I get, I get nervous. I get nervous, and I just want to get the king out of there. So that's what we did. He's probably going to run back here. And am I going to take... Yeah, I'm going to take it. I'm going to go here. Lining up on the pawn. What are we at? 3-4? Three, three, even. It's an even game. White's played very well. Props to our opponent. Doing a very nice job. Let's go ahead. That's a good move, actually. Because it's a double attack here. Very nice move. So... Gotta be a little careful... Gotta be a little careful. I'm gonna... Mm, also this one. Wow, what a move. What a move. I'm gonna go here. And I realize I'm losing my knight. But I'm what I'm doing is pinning both of these... I'm pinning the knight here. And I'm pinning the rook here. And I think I'm gonna have a nice follow-up move. Which is going to win me something back. 
At least in theory, that's my idea. Assuming White sees this. Kind of a tricky move to see. Okay, yeah, they didn't see it. But they do defend, so that's 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 a good move. Let's go here. Again, lining up so that if the, the knight moves, we take this, and that's what we're gonna see. There we go. Let's come over here, defend the bishop. And whenever you're castled and you have three pawns in front of your king, you got to watch out for the back rank checkmates, right? Especially when your rooks start leaving. So I'm just keeping an eye on that. This one, I think I can just take. But again, okay, they do resign. All right. Good game to our opponent. So we just played the Danish gambit. Let me get the wheel up. What I'm going to do is remove one from the Danish gambit. So it was a two. Now it becomes a one. Tennyson Gambit. No, the Tennyson Gambit is not on the wheel currently. Yeah, the Scotch is already there. I think you're right about that. Yes, it is. Okay. All right. And let's go ahead. Spin again. No, we've had some Bond Cloud games. We've had, actually, we've had a couple of Bond Cloud games. Oh, that's what everybody wanted to see. That's what everybody wanted to see. Okay, I have to go look it up because I don't actually know it. I don't actually know what it is. <laughs> Toilet variation. Chess opening. Let's see if we can find something on Google here. That's an interesting picture. Uh, okay. Not your average opening, the toilet variation. Let's see if this is going to say, say what it is. I'm sorry, is that what it is? Okay. Is it for white or... I'm so confused. Who told me to add the toilet variation? Which version do you want to see? Because it looks like there's... Hold on, let me see what Lee Chess says about it. Uh... It almost looks like it's black playing c5 and d5. That's what it looks like. Let me just check one more source. I just want to make sure I get it right here. No, see, there, there's there's confusion over what exactly the line is. All right. Hmm. Okay, this is. This, I'll show you guys what I'm finding. Hold on. Let me let me do this. Show what I'm finding over here. With a variation. All right. This is what it's showing me. Uh, e4, c5, f4, d5. Where did it go? Where did it go? Or knight f6. There's some confusion here on the exact order of this. But it's basically this. And then I don't know what happens after this. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to just say, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say it's c5, d5, knight f6, and then what should the next move be? Somebody tell me. Somebody give me something. Give me something. What should the fourth move be? What do you want to see? I'll let you guys choose. What should the fourth move be? I'm going to play c5, d5, knight of six. Somebody said a6, e5. King e7. e5. I like it. I like it. c5, d5, knight of six, and e5. We're going to do that. 
Okay. It's decided. C5, D5, Knight F6, E5. Okay. So C4, D4, Knight F3, E4. All right. That wasn't so bad. That wasn't so bad. Doesn't seem like a great position. I'm going to try to play B4. If black's smart, they might play A5 and shut me down. Because this is a knight. Okay, they're going to let me do it. So let's go ahead. Expand over here. And I'm going to try to win back my pawn. They're trying to hold on to it. But I can play b5, and I think I can still grab it here. Next move. Looks like I can do that. I think I'm going to take with the knight. There could actually be a tactic here if I take with the bishop. Yeah, if I take with the bishop, watch this. Takes, takes, boom, with the check. And when I take back, I lose my queen. So I'm going to avoid that. Wow, the pre-move bishop g4. Pre-move bishop g4. Let's go f3. Chase that away. Whoa. What is going on here? I'm going to take it. I mean, I guess we just go here or here and then keep trying to develop. We, we do have some issue, some interesting things here that I don't love. I'm going to go bishop g2. And I might try to castle and put my king in the corner. Because my king doesn't seem very safe right now. King does not seem very safe. Let's let's do it. Temporarily going into a pin. Play c5. I guess I have to do it, right? And then we're going to get out of the pin here. Okay. And now I feel pretty safe. All right. Oh, I see what's happening. He's trying to do this. So I better go here to threaten the rook. Although my rook's going to be under attack too. No, they didn't see it. Okay. Black was winning there. I just didn't see it. All right. Well. Pack the bishop. Take the free pawn. Come over here. I guess we're going to go get a queen. Why not? Why not? Where's the king going? Where's the king going? Check, because if the pawn takes, I do have this. Maybe even this is better to save my queen. Take their check. Hmm. Go check here. I'm going to line up this way, creating the discover check. So we move the knight anywhere we want, and it unleashes the queen onto the king. Okay, I'll take that, bring the rook over, I'm 
Go F4. Wow. Uh... I don't know. I guess I'll just defend my piece. I don't really see a checkmate. Kind of amazing, actually. Look at this guy. He's trying to come in here now, too. It's amazing. The queen's hanging. Sheesh. Let's go check this way. What an interesting position. You know what I mean? All right. Let's come here, I guess. Wow. Well played by our, our opponent there. Putting up quite the fight. I missed mate in one. Did I really? You guys keep saying that. I don't believe you. I really don't believe you. Let's see. Did I miss mate in one? It would have been probably over here if I did. Mate in seven. Mate in three. Mate in four. Mate in two. I did miss mate in one. You are correct. Queen d6. Very very good. Or queen a6. Yep, you're right. I missed it. Move 23. Oh, this is move 30. Wait, move 23 I had it too? No. No, not move 23. Yeah, move 30. It was there. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Heaven Wings 2. Hey, you're welcome. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, let's pull up the wheel. And toilet variation has been completed, so we're going to take that off of the list here and spin it again. Okay. All right. Oops. Uh, there we go. Oh, there. Spin. All right. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay, get ready, guys. Get ready. <laughs> now, for those of you who didn't catch it earlier, the version of the Bond Cloud that I'm going with is E3, King, E2, E4, King, E3. Okay, so there's those are my four moves. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh no, our opponent's playing some good moves too. All right. We're playing some really good moves. <laughs> All right, opening has been completed. Can we survive is now the question. Okay, what I'm going to do first is play h3. I want to take away some options from these pieces, all right? And I'm I'm probably just going to go back or should I see if I can survive out here? Or over here over here looks bad. But it's it's either here or here. We'll go to d3 and see what happens. We'll see if we can survive. Maybe h3 was a poor choice. He wants to go bishop a6. What I'm going to do is play c3 and, and hide over here. I'm going to hide over here. Bring the king out further. Well, I can't now. I have to go here. I could go this way. You get attacked this way with the king. Well, I'm probably going to take this back. You can go to a4. 
Could have taken the bishop, actually. Didn't see that before. Now we can infiltrate with the king, potentially. But we gotta be careful. Queen is here. Yeah, now it gets dangerous. Now it gets real dangerous. I better do this before I get checkmated. Ooh, good move. That's a good move by our opponent. Oh, I gotta take it and run. I gotta take it and run. Let's take that. Okay, he's trying to go for the rook, so let's go here. Actually, I could do queen f3. Queen f3 would be a great move because it... Almost forces a queen trade. I mean, it kind of forces a queen trade. They could go here, but then they lose all their pieces. And if you go back here, you also lose the rooks. Yeah, we should be fine, actually, now over here. Nice and safe. Grab both of the rooks. And our king's actually pretty safe now because, yeah, even this, what we can do is play b3 and we have a, a place to escape over here. So we can just do that. All right, I'll take the queen. Let's go c4, then we can run up this way if we need to. As long as we don't get checkmated with the knight over here. But no, we're just going to keep going. All right. We did it. We made it to the other side. Now let's look for a checkmate. No, it's too late. All right. Good game to our opponent. They started out really well. They, they did start out very well with the, uh, the opening. Okay. Let me pull up the wheel. Von Cloud gets... One removed, so it was at a four, I think. Let's see, yeah, Von Cloud was four. So that goes down to three. Okay, still the biggest slice on the, the wheel. <laughs> What's happening? All right, for, any, for anybody who's coming late, we spin the wheel, it chooses the opening. I have to play those first four moves of that opening. Pre-moved, I don't get to change it, and just live with the consequences. Stonewall. Okay, Stonewall. All right. So Stonewall, for anybody who doesn't know, is a setup where you put your pawns d4, f4, e3, and usually the knight goes here or, or maybe c3. Oh, I'll probably do c3 for this. e3. Okay, so you put your pawns like this. This is the Stonewall formation. It's actually a solid opening. It's actually a very solid opening. But in this case i don't know how it's going to turn out so let's let's go ahead stonewall here we go all right d4 f4 e3 c3 Ooh, ooh. okay black's not messing around as we can see <laughs> got the annoying pawn in front of the king let's go ahead knight to f3 is a good move because it sort of controls some of these squares, so we don't have to worry about that. But this pawn is very annoying. Probably what I'm going to do is develop and then take it back. So we'll, yeah, let's do that. Let's go. We'll go to c4. We'll try to take it back. Maybe queen d3 or queen e2. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and castle first. I just want to get my king out of there. Okay, perfect. Now actually we have... We actually have a threat here. Take six check, king goes there. No, I guess we just gotta take it now. Ah, uh, you know what I could do? I'll go I'll move the rook over. Because you remember what I what I always say, right? If the king's in the center, we need our rook to be there. So I'm moving the rook over so I can take with the rook instead of the bishop or the queen. And now we have a pin. And we win we win the queen, essentially. Also, let's pile up on that pinned piece. 
probably try to get rid of this one since it's defending. Notice how I'm focusing on the weak point and applying pressure. So there's a check here. It's not checkmate. I could just move there, but I may as well just stop it anyway to give myself time to finish developing. Okay, well, if he's going to do that, I'll go ahead and let him do it since I'm getting a pawn. But I am going to have to deal with, with this. Yeah, that's a good move by our opponent. It's a pretty good move. So I'm going to come down here to defend. I don't want the rooks coming in. Now, he could still go there, but I'm going to get two rooks for the queen. And at the end of everything, I have these extra pieces. So it's a nice trade for me. Okay, he retreats. He's going to try to probably go check. That's okay. I'll be able to run and hide. Let's go ahead and get the rook involved. We'll take the pawn. We'll jump in with the knight. All right. Let's go with the check. Let's go with the check. It's a fork. And so we're going to be grabbing the rook. I mean, I say that. I could also go for checkmate. Let's do that instead. B3. So A4 is checkmate. That is the plan. All right. Good game to our opponent. ICBM. Yes, we can add ICBM. Um, yes. All right, hold on. Let me pull up the wheel. That's, what is that? Intercontinental ballistic missile gamut or something, right? If I'm not mistaken. ICBM. I'll have to look it up. I don't actually remember what that is, but I, I have heard it before. All right, it's been added there. You can see it, ICBM. And what did we just play? Stonewall. It was a stonewall. So let's remove the stonewall from the list here. Stonewall, remove. Okay, so Stonewall is off of the wheel. ICBM has been added. Let's go ahead and spin it. The bird. Okay. Bird. Yep, there you go. All right. Now, I do need to look up the first four moves of the bird because I, I only know, like, the first two moves. So let's see. The bird is when you play f4, okay? f4. And let's see what the main line is. Let me see if I can follow it over here. d5, knight f3, and I don't really know what comes after this. Let's just say knight f6. Looks like it's g3, okay? And then bishop g2. Okay, so here we go. This is the bird that we're going to go with. One, two, three, four. All right? Let's jump in. One. Two, three, four. And it looks like our opponent is not putting any pressure on us, so it didn't really cost us anything. Let's jump the knight in, actually. Let's jump right in, attacking the bishop. Since we didn't move our e-pawn, we have no pin there. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the bishop pair. And, you know, if you're able to open up the position after you get the bishop pair, so two bishops against only one, it's usually going to be a pretty nice deal for you. So I'm going to play h3, chase the knight out of there. It does create a weakness here that I will have to keep an eye on. But right now, black's not really set up to take advantage of that. I'm going to play d3 to take this square away, and I'll probably try to play e4 after we get the knight out. Also, I'm probably going to castle too. Yeah, let's go ahead and castle. And I might tuck my king over here if I need to. Although I could also just play d4 if they go there. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I will. Because it's a tempo. It gains a tempo. I'm going to do it. Chases the bishop away. And now I can still play e4 as well. Okay, he's going to go there. I'm going to take it.
Well, it's probably going to just drop back and get the pawn up into the center. Maybe c3 to support here and let the queen out is a good plan as well. Okay, there's a free piece, so we may as well take that. Backs the rook. Another pawn there. All right, so that's the threat. I am going to give up the bishop. Now, normally I wouldn't do that, but in this case, I'm happy to do it. Why? Because the king can no longer castle. So that's a pretty good deal, right? The king is now stuck in an awkward position. All right, let's go ahead and try to defend some of these weaknesses here. So we're going to play c3 and then maybe e4, e5. And that's going to be a very nice looking pawn chain, pawn sort of triangle thing. Pyramid thing is what I was trying to say. Yeah, it looks pretty good. You can get e5 in here. All right, look at that. I like that. I like that. It's just like, it almost reminds me of the London, except we have the extra pawn out here. Okay. Let's go for a check. Get my queen out there and start, start uh, to attack things. Okay. Okay. How do we want to do this? I'm going to play... Hmm. I'm going to play the move rook f2. And what I'm thinking is I want to block this off. I also want to defend the pawn so that I can use my bishop. That's what I'm thinking. So that's why I went there. Yep, bishop b3. This is already defended, so black can't really do that unless they're going to sacrifice the queen. And they are going to sacrifice the queen. Okay. And we're going to take it and take the pawn. Okay. Not a bad try by our opponent. Let's go ahead. Opening up the king... Unleashing the bishop here, very clever way to do that. And our opponent misses it. Go ahead and recapture that. Probably going to go here next or here. Maybe just push pawns. Okay, yeah, let's go ahead. Check. We'll push it again. All right. Don't see checkmate. Close, but it's not quite. Bring the rook into the game. I guess we'll just get another queen. Don't really see checkmate. May Hold on. Maybe it's close here. Maybe it's close now. If I go check there, king has to go here. Wow, I don't, I don't see a checkmate. Okay, I guess we'll just do this. And it's no stalemate because there's lots of pawns, so we're okay there. Should be a checkmate pretty soon. Okay, good game to our opponent. And back to the wheel. Back to the wheel. All right, we did the bird. I'm going to lower the bird down to one since we did just play it. Back up here to the wheel. Let's spin it again. Time for me to stand up, stretch my legs. Friendly reminder, if you haven't stood up, or walked around, go do that. Seriously, pause it, pause the stream, stretch your legs, go get some water, do some calf raises, do whatever you need to do. Important. The French defense, what? Okay, French defense. All right, so let's see what the main line of the French is. Let's see what the main line is. I think, pull up the analysis board here. It's going to be this, this, and I think the main line is actually, I don't know what's more common. Let me see. Yeah, it is knight c3. Knight c3, bishop b4, e5, and what's the c5? Okay. So these are going to be our first four moves. One, two, three, four. 
One, two, three, four. Here we go. All right. One, two, three, four. Are they going to en passant? Are they going to do it? This is the question. This is the question. Ah, okay. They take this way. So we're going to go ahead. Uh, we've completed our, our opening. So we're going to take that before we get into trouble here. B3. All right. We're going to just develop. No reason to get too fancy at this moment. Ooh, that's a fork. So we're going to take that and get the rook over here. Okay. French defense was a success this time around. Even in the pre-move variation. Let's go ahead and castle. Get the king out of the center. Get this knight out. Since I'm ahead, I'm going to trade. Remember, if you're ahead material, trading is good. Okay, that's why I just took that. We're ahead the rook, right? Or a rook and a piece. So any trading is good. All right, he's trying to take my bishop. I do have this here, so I could, in theory, leave it, but I'll just go ahead and retreat it. Why not? Are we going to see the O'Kelly variation? Yeah, I can I can try to play the O'Kelly variation. Um, I can try to do that. Okay, let's go ahead and threaten the checkmate. See if our opponent is going to see that. Okay, they don't see it. And so we're going to come in here with the victory. Good game to our opponent. All right. So back to the wheel. We played the French. Let me go ahead and remove that from the wheel here. French is gone. And let's go spin it again. Ooh. Hippo again. Hippo again. Okay, Hippo's pretty solid. Hippo's pretty solid. All right. Let's jump right in. I think you guys probably remember the Hippo from before. If not, you'll get to see it right now. One, two, three, four. Pretty safe. Let's go ahead and finish it out. We'll finish out the Hippo. You know what? I'm going to pre-move the whole Hippo. How about that? I'm feeling pretty confident against this opponent. Okay. There you go. Wow, that was 10 moves in three seconds. Okay. And now you can basically do whatever you want. Let's go ahead and expand over here and make some room for our queen. And we could probably castle this way. That looks pretty safe. And go ahead and pre-move that castling. All right, let's see. Bring the rook to the center. Probably going to play d4, which threatens a fork. That's a nice little sneaky move there to win a piece. See if Black sees that again, same threat. And also notice the rook that we brought is now lined up with the queen. So Black has to be careful here. Okay, there's the fork. Let's go ahead. We've got the fork. They can take this if they want. Okay, that's a free piece. And we have a pin here. So bad news for Black now. Because you can't save the bishop unless you're willing to lose the queen. So there we go. Oh, we also have this. I just noticed that. Okay. Well, I guess now's the time. So now's the time. And as you can see, at this rating level, the hippo is a very, very strong opening. Very strong. I think we've had good success with the hippo in all of our games. I'm trading why? Because I'm ahead material. So it makes sense. I'm grabbing a free pawn. We're going to come over here, create the battery, and threaten the checkmate. And good job by our opponent. They did see it. Very nice move. So I have to change my plan since they, uh, they did see that one. Probably going to take this next. Okay, now let's see. Are they going to try to checkmate me here? Got to be a little careful, actually. Got to be a little careful. Maybe the easiest thing is to just go here to not let the queen come in. Very nice idea by our opponent, but we can easily sidestep that. And I think what I'm going to actually do, just to simplify, is I'm going to sack the queen, and I'm going to push the pawn. And black is forced to put their queen in front. Well, they're not forced. They could do that. But 
I can just block and oh they can take it I didn't see that I messed up messed up yeah good wow good job to to our opponent I didn't see that I made a mistake all right well we still have quite a few pieces so I'm not concerned um but that yeah I missed that actually so take this way add the O'Neill gambit yeah sure I don't know what that is but I'll definitely add it all right let's go ahead let's go on the offensive here see if we can Get that get after the king. Okay, there's a fork. So we got the queen. And let's just do a little ladder action here. Pawns are in the way though, so we're gonna have to get them out of the way. Let's start pushing those guys. Let's move here. Getting these out of the way. I do have to be careful for a stalemate, but I see black has lots of options with the king, so we're okay. Again, make sure, whenever you're playing a position like this, make sure you identify a square that they can move to, okay? So I'm gonna go here, but I see, I see a square that they can move to, so it's not a stalemate. That's important. Okay, where's the checkmate? Here we go. Good game to our opponent. All right. So, uh, Pickled Coast 256, the O'Neill Gambit. Yeah, I'll add that. I don't think I know that one, but I'll go ahead and add it, and we will figure it out if it uh, pops up. All right, so O'Neill Gambit. If I can type. Okay. O'Neill Gambit. There you go. Third move in the Carol Con is C5, according to Levy. Really? C6, D5, C5. Okay. I didn't know that. All right, Harry. Take it easy. Have a good dinner. Okay. Here's the wheel. And what was I going to do? I feel like I was going to do something. I don't remember what it was. All right. We're going to spin the wheel. All right, all right. Win count is 35, and here we go. It's a scholar's mate. It's time for the scholar's mate. All right. For those of you who are wondering, this is the scholar's mate. Bishop c4, queen h5, checkmate. This is scholar's mate. All right, we're going to pre-move it. We're gonna pre-mind. <laughs> oh boy. Oh. Okay, so what does my fourth move have to be? Now I'm confused. Now I'm conf what do I do? I gotta make one more move, but I, I can't do it. What do you guys think? King <laughs> King E7? A pawn move? Well that would be a good move, but I I feel like I need to like play one more bad move, you know? Sack the queen. Queen G3. Which pawn? All right, we'll do it. We'll do it. I mean, that was the closest thing I could do to the move that I wanted to play, right? Okay. Let's develop. We've got some coming back to do now. And then our opponent is piling on the pressure. A good move. Let's try to defend, and let's see what they're going to do about that. If they're smart... They'll sack it. We'll just sack it and, and take anyway. So let's see if they're going to do that. Oh, they're going to go for the checkmate this way. Okay. I'm I'm thinking we castle to add a defender that way. But maybe I don't want my king over here if they're going to sack this. But maybe it's safer to play rook f8. Or 
I jump in and attack the queen. Trying to mix it up and confuse them a little bit. Let's do that one. I like that option better. Trying to trick them a little bit. Hopefully they just like retreat. That would be ideal, right? Maybe they get worried about this and they just go back. Because really, if white keeps the pressure up here, uh, I mean, I'm in trouble, right? But we'll see. Ooh, smart. Okay. I think I'm just going to sidestep. I think I'm just going to sidestep. I might want to play c6 and, and give my king a, an escape route over here. We'll see how they're going to deal with the threat first. Scholar's mate. Ooh. Okay, so interesting move. We can go for the fork. I'm just wondering, can I get away with that? I think we have to try. I think we have to get some of these pieces back. But I do have to be very careful here. Once I get c6 in, then the king is actually pretty safe. We can just run over here and, and hide, and we'll be fine, probably. But that's an important move that I do need to play at some point. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. All right, good game to our opponents. Unfortunate there. Unfortunate there. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, here's the wheel. I'm going to take off Scholar's Mate since we just did that one. Where's it at? There it is, the bottom. Okay, Scholar's Mate is off. So here's the updated wheel. Um, I need like two minutes. Just give me two minutes to take a quick break. I'm going to spin it. Oh, you know what? I want to see if I can do something. I want to see if I can do something. Can I take the... Uh... Let me see. Spin behavior. Yeah, let me see. Spin duration. Okay. I'm going to make it take 30 seconds. Just because I'm going to be gone longer than that anyway. All right. Here you go, guys. I'll be back in a few minutes. Just give me uh, a couple minutes. These videos will get a bit long. Any chance of doing 30 to 60 minute ones? Um, maybe. It kind of just depends on how much time I have. That's why. If I have more time, I'll just do them longer. If I don't have much time, I'll, I'll do shorter ones. So yeah, just kind of depends. Good question, though. Okay. Here we go, guys. Ready? I'll be right back.
All right, what do we get? F Vampire Gambit. Did I play this one already? What did I did I I don't even remember what it was though. What was the Vampire Gambit? All right, let's look it up. Uh oh, somebody super chatted. I missed it. What did you say? Wait, did I miss something? I don't think so, right? I don't see it. Somebody did. Let me know what it was. Okay, Vampire Gambit. I can't remember. Yeah, I did look this up earlier, right? What was it? Is it C4, F4? Somebody tell me what it was. Somebody tell me what it was. Vampire Gambit. I'm pretty sure it was C4, F... Was it C4, F4, Knight, F3, G3? Is that what we said? Can someone confirm? One, two, three, four. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate you. All right. Oh, I got a Streamlabs tip. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, what was said? Let me see if I can find that. Where's that at? Hold on. Let me see what it was. Was there a message or was it just a tip? Was it just a tip? I don't see a message with it. Oh, you asked to add double fee in ghetto. Okay. Got it. I will do that. Thanks. Sorry about that. Okay. Double fee and keto. Yes. Let's do that. Back to the wheel for a second. Double fee and keto's on there. Okay. Got it. Thank you, Frankster. Appreciate you. All right. Oh, it's just, it's pickerwheel.com. It's just a free, it's just a free one. And you can, you can change the colors of it. That's how it, why it looks different probably. But it's just free. Yeah. Okay. Not sponsored, by the way. <laughs> All right. Um, let's go ahead and, bam, what am I doing again? I forgot. C4, F4, Knight F3, G3, Vampire. Let's go. Let's go. 571. I was trying to get to 700. I don't think it's going to happen in this stream. Oh, let's see. We'll give it a shot. All right. C5, F5, Knight F6, G6. Ooh. Ooh, we play C4. All right. Ooh, this is going to work out nicely. This is going to work out very nicely. Okay, so we actually have a normal position. I'm just going to develop the bishop since it's already ready to go. We're going to castle. Notice these pawns are blocking this diagonal. So I'm not really even concerned about my king here because there's no way a bishop or a queen can do anything right now. So that works out nicely. I'm going to make the knight move. And probably play e5. Oh, I can't play e5 yet. Let's play d6 first, and maybe we'll we'll think about e5 later. I don't know if I want to create a backward pawn, though. But maybe I'll just develop some other pieces. Let's just see what's going to happen. Just develop. Sometimes what you can do is play a6, rook b8, and, and b5 over here. But now that I see that, I'm going to take advantage. Yeah, I'm going to take advantage of this. Let's take this way first. 
forces the recapture, and then we can grab the rook. There you go. So always be paying attention. You know, you look at a position like this, and you think, oh, there's, there's no way, right? No way that's ever going to happen. But it, it just takes one move. And all of a sudden, everything opens up, and then you get a free rook. You really got to pay attention to that kind of stuff. Okay. Got to watch my king a little bit. Let's, let's play 95, trying to trade, and also letting out the bishop. Okay, he does trade. We'll take that. Queen h5. And I think we would just simply defend the pawn. Queen c2. He's going for this. It's not a bad move. Yeah, that's not a terrible idea. But we can just tuck our king over here. I think we're okay. I think we're okay. Play e6. I'm going to give my queen some options here along the diagonal. Okay, like... Case in point. Here, check. Yeah, we gotta watch out though. I don't want to get perpetual checked into a draw. So I'm gonna put a stop to that. I'm gonna put a stop to that right away. I guess I had bishop g7. I guess it was okay, but this looks pretty good too, because now the rook is involved potentially. Here you go. There you go. I think I see a cool checkmate about to happen. You guys want to pause? Do you see it? I'll give you five seconds. Three, two, one. Congratulations if you saw it. Hey, good job. Some of you guys saw it. Nice. Good job. Okay. Here's the wheel. What did we just play? Vampire Gambit, right? Let's remove the Vampire Gambit. And let's spin it again. Oh, I want to fix. I don't want it to take 30 seconds anymore. So I'm going to make it. I think I had it on eight seconds before. Oh, yeah. Let's go eight seconds. The Italian. Okay. Italian game. For anybody who doesn't know what the Italian is, here we go. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4 is the Italian. And then usually black either plays bishop c5 or knight f6. On knight f6, knight g5 is pretty common. Also d3. And on bishop c5, I think c3 is the most common move. So I'm going to go with knight g5. So these will be my first four moves. One, two, or sorry, one, two, three, four. Okay. I think that'll be the most interesting. And here we go. Update the wins. Yeah, what are the wins? Somebody tell me what the wins are. So here, here, here. Ooh. Ooh. What are we doing? What are we doing? 37 wins. Thanks. Thanks, guys. It's nice having you guys around to remember all that stuff for me. Okay. <laughs> he doesn't take either free piece. Doesn't take either one. So I'm going to go here and defend the other one, and all of a sudden, I'm not losing it. Oh, my. Our opponent is not concerned about the f2 square, as we can see. So, there we go. All right. That was fast. Good game to our opponent. Okay, Italian is now getting removed from the wheel. Let's go ahead and spin it again. Hippo again. All right. Hippo. All right. I feel like we've gotten quite a few hippos. It's a solid opening. What can I say? I'm going to go ahead and remove it from the wheel, though. Hippo. Yeah, hippo is now gone. Okay, removed. And let's jump in to the hippo. 
All right, hippo. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hippo is such a solid opening that I feel like I should just pre move all ten of them. Okay, and we did. And look at our position. Oh! I was about to say it looks great, except for that. Looks great, except for that. All right, let's go here. So ten, maybe 10 moves was a bit much. Pre-moving 10 moves is, is quite a lot. But despite being down the bishop, our position is still pretty solid. So I, I think there's, there's hope for us yet. Can I play c4? Takes, takes, yeah, I should be able to do that. And we're threatening a fork over here. We also have a nice pin here. Okay, good move by our opponent. Wow, very nice move. Yeah, okay. Because if I go here, they, they do have 95, which is a good move. So I'm going to play queen b3. I'm setting up along this diagonal. This is defended, of course. I'm also opening up the square for my my rook okay they they decided to go there which actually now i can take this and i'll just go back take the piece and run okay that looks like a fork so we're gonna go for f4 you gotta you gotta watch putting pieces in that configuration when there's pawns because you can get forked easily take the bishop I don't really see anywhere that that knight can go to that I'm concerned with, so. Sorry. Okay. Check takes, yeah, let's go ahead. And now that I'm ahead material, trading is good. And I'm also trying to cut off the defense from the knight. I'll just take that. And take the knight. Lining up here. Okay, I think black might be a little bit frustrated. Understandable. All right, good game to our opponent. Let's see what we have. The hippo is off. Off the wheel, we're going to spin it again. And I think I'm going to play two more games, guys. Two more games. Vienna Gambit. All right. So the Vienna Gambit, let's just go over that briefly, is going to be e4, knight c3, and then f4. So black, I think, usually plays knight f6 here. Let's see. This is, yeah, this is the main one. f4. Vienna Gambit, and then what's black's most popular is going to be d5, and then I'm supposed to play f takes e5. Okay, all right, so one, two, three, four. That's what we have for the next game. One, two, three, four. We're black. One, two, three, four. Thirty-nine wins. I'm two behind. Okay, thank you. Opponent looks like they're going to abort. Okay, let's try that again. One, two, three, four. Okay, this is interesting. They take with the knight. What I like about this is now I can play d4. It's kind of like a Halloween gambit, except. I didn't have to sack my knight for it. I just traded this pawn. So it's it's a little different. We're going to push the knight away because the knight's defending here. Once the knight moves, we're going to have a free piece right here. Yeah, chess mating. That's right. So black's trying to figure out what to do here, but it's it's a bit of a problem for them.
Okay, that's not a bad solution. They pin the pawn. But I can't take this, and this is still defended. Well done. Well done. What I can do, though, is play bishop e2. Breaks the pin. Okay, so the, I renew the threat on the knight. And at the same time, I add another attacker over here. So again, same problem for, for black, and now I don't think there's a way to get out of it. Okay, so they're going to try to go there. But like I said, we're going to go ahead and take this because we, we broke the pin. So we can do that now. We're also hitting this. We're going to go ahead and take that as well. So we end up grabbing two pieces there from that exchange. All right, we're going to go bishop g5. Remember, whenever you can accomplish multiple things at the same time, you should do it. I'm developing a piece. I'm also attacking the queen. I'm also putting it on a, a diagonal that's going to prevent castling. Not that they could castle anyway, but you get the idea. I'm also clearing the way for king to castle multiple things in one move. That's usually a good sign that it's a good move. Any chance for a 23 to 2400 attempt in 10 mini games? Um, I'm going to trade because I'm ahead two pieces, so why not? Probably not because it's so close to my actual rating that I think I just need to play on my regular account because chess.com does have to manually go back and refund all those points, I believe. And I don't want to be creating like extra work for them for no reason when I could just be playing on my regular account, if that makes sense. So because it's it's so close to my regular rating of 2400, I don't think it's really worth it. So here's a fork. We're going to take that and then just trade and get a queen or something. I'm going to play one more game after this and then that'll be good for today. I do have a video for you guys uh, that I'm going to post on the channel. As soon as I end the stream, I'm going to post a new video. So you can go watch that if you want to be one of the, the first people to watch it. It's a different kind of video. So let me know in the comments what you think about it. Because it's definitely not the normal video. Yeah, I think our opponent uh, has already abandoned this game. Hey, Alistair, Grant, thank you. I'm doing well. The leg is, is much better, and the kids are doing okay. All right, guys, last game, okay? We're going to play one more game. Drum roll. Oh, check the perk, okay. So this one is, is very similar to the regular perk, except, let's flip it around. So the, the normal perk is you play d6, and then you play knight f6, and then you would usually do something like, I think, g6 and bishop g7. Oh, you can't see. Sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You play d6, you play knight f6. This is the normal perk. You play g6 and bishop g7, okay? The... Check perk, I believe, is somebody said you play c6 and queen a5. So let me see if, the, oops, not c5, c6 and queen a5. Yes. So it's like a, it's a different version where the queen just comes out to the side. Okay. So these are going to be our first four moves. This is the only one that's potentially concerning. All right, let's go ahead. Last game. Wish me luck. We didn't quite make it to 700, but that's okay. 607 still had quite a few quite a few wins here and so oh and we're black too so it works out so d6 knight of six c6 queen a5 uh-oh uh-oh so it costs us a knight all right costs us a knight i'm gonna take that I'm going to block with the bishop. The reason I'm blocking with this bishop, guys, by the way, is I want to castle. But if I block with this bishop, I can't castle because the queen would simply take me, right? This one can just sit here. So let's go back. And I'm going to play bishop e7 and probably castle this way. Uh, 
Okay, interesting move there. Almost got me. Uh, sleeping. So I'll go ahead and trade. Now I can castle. It's a different situation because my queen is defending. Okay, what I said earlier doesn't apply because the queen is here. And again, when you see your opponent's king in the center and you have a rook, what do you need to do? That's right. You line up on the king. Now, if our opponent is smart, they're just going to castle and get it, get away from that. That's it. That's it. Also works. Okay. Let's bring the knight out. Probably going to bring it back over here, actually, and maybe defend my king with it. Nice idea by our opponent. Look at this. Going for the checkmate. So we have two options. Option number one, we play g6. Shuts down the queen. Option number two, we play bishop f8 to defend. Now, g6 is nice because it just really just... There's no way the queen's coming through that way. The problem, though, is it allows this bishop to just sit there. Now, that being said, I could really trade that off at any moment if I wanted to. So with all that being said, I guess I'll go ahead with g6. Now I can maybe even use this f5 square to chase the queen around a little bit if I want. I'm still down a piece. I've got to keep that in mind. But white's king is a little bit awkward. Now they can go to g2 and the rook can come over that way. But whenever you see a king like this, if the rook has not, if they haven't castled, one of the, the good things is that the rook can't come into the game easily. So if I had a way to prevent the king from doing this, I would. I don't think I can. But I am going to play f5, chase that queen out of there. Also get control of this square to stop the knight. Okay. Let's go ahead with bringing the knight forward. We might hop over here. It looks like that's what I'm going to do. Attacking the queen. Also trying to grab some of these pawns. Okay, I'm thinking we play h5, allow this capture, take with the rook, double up over here. I guess I didn't even actually need to play h5. I was kind of trying to plan ahead, but it, maybe it was a sort of a wasted move. Okay, we're going to take the free pawn. This is defended all, well enough, so no need to panic there. And this guy's coming over. Feeling like I have some pretty good chances. Let's go ahead and grab as many pawns as I can. In case we go into an endgame, those will be useful. Let's jump back over here. Probably going to double up here. I don't really want to allow this. So I could also just push it or just play a6. I'll just play a6, so that's defended. And now I can safely come over here with the other rook. Okay, here we go. Doubling up. Three, six, seven. Oh, I have eight pawns, actually. Three, four, five. So I have three pawns for the knight. So I could actually, in theory, trade queens and still have a pretty nice end game. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll see, well, you can see how to how to win this with the, the pawns against the knight. I think what I'm going to do is focus over here because I have four against two. So this is probably where I'm going to try to make my move. Yep. And I'm going to focus on these guys. Okay. They're, the knights are far away. And so we're going to push these with the support of these pieces. And most likely white's not going to be able to stop them. Okay. So that's going to be our plan. Something like this. The rook can come over as needed. Yeah. He's going to try to figure out how to use those, but they're just so far away. It's hard to do. It's very hard to do. Notice the knight is already supporting. And you can't really stop these guys. Let's keep going. We'll bring the rook over when we need to. But right now, yep, I'll go ahead and trade. And now is probably the time. Let's go ahead and defend that guy so that we can push this one. Like I mentioned, the knight's too far away. So you can't really stop these if you're white. And now there's probably going to be a nice tactic where we sack one of them. And if the rook takes, we take, take, and we get the queen. Okay, so that's the idea. Takes, 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 gets the queen. Pretty well played by our opponent, though. Very impressive, I will say, for 600. This guy is a strong 600. Got to give him that. Yeah, even there, he finds a, a way to, to prolong 
Very well played. Let's take it. We'll go behind this pawn. Get the queen. All right, good game to our opponent. Yeah, it played very well. Surprising. All right. Okay, guys, that's it. What's the win count? Somebody tell me. Is it 40 or did I miss some more? I have no idea what it is. 41? Thanks, Tim. 41. Okay, I'm going to trust you on that one. All right, check perk. Let me remove that from our list real quick before I forget about it. All right, so here's the wheel, by the way, if you're wondering. For next time, we'll pick up here. Okay, this is what the wheel is looking like. On cloud, still has a pretty nice slice there. And it should be interesting to finish it off. Thank you, guys. Have a good weekend. And I'll see you next time. Oh, yeah. So like I said, as soon as I end the stream, I'm going to post a video. Okay, so it'll be like a minute or two after this. I'm going to post a video. So you can go watch that if you want. Go to the homepage. It'll be there in just a second. Okay, take it easy. Stay sharp.